Now, we have an example. Okay. This is on page uh, 29 in your notes. Okay. So page 29 in your notes. It says the flow rate from A to B is 565 litres per second. Okay, determine the power required from the pump. Um, we've, we've got our, anybody know what that, that term is? That new term? What is it? Kinematic viscosity, that's right. We covered that in the first, well, the first week of this semester. Okay, it says for a commercial steel pipe, we've got epsilon value of 0 0.000045 metres, okay? So, we've got a reservoir, a, okay, a reservoir B, and we've got a pipe going between them, and we've got a pump in there as well, okay? We know the diameter, that's 200 millimetres, okay? We've got our epsilon value, okay? And we've got to determine the power required. Well, we all know that power is the pressure drop times by the flow rate, okay? And so the point of this exercise is to work out what the power required is, okay? Can I do that? No, I can't do that. Okay, the power required, and that is the, um, the pressure drop times by the flow rate. Okay, so we've got to work out the pressure drop. So the first thing to do, like all these problems, let's write Bernoulli's equation. I've got my delta PP term in here because there's a pump. P2 plus one half rho C2 squared plus rho GZ2 plus delta P L, okay? Okay, so there's our Bernoulli's equation. It's a good thing he didn't copyright it, otherwise we'd all be in big trouble. The number of times we write it, either that or he'd be very rich. Okay, now we've got, in our tank, okay, in our reservoirs, notice they're both open to the atmosphere, okay? So if we take this, this is our point A, or this is point 1, this is point 2, okay? They're both open to atmosphere, so P1 and P2 are both atmospheric pressure, and so they can drop out, okay? We don't need that. P1 equals P2, which equals P atmospheric, okay? Because they're the same, you subtract one side from the other, and you get them to drop out, okay? Now, again... We're dealing with reservoirs. Now, an open reservoir, okay, the area of the open reservoir, okay, is so much larger than the diameter of the pipe that we can assume that the velocity of the reservoir, okay, the velocity at which this water is dropping is zero, okay? If you imagine you've got a huge lake, okay, and the lake has a dam, and at one end of the dam you've got a turbine that's generating electricity. Now, that water through that turbine is going very quickly, okay? It's got a lot of energy, we try and convert that energy to mechanical energy to generate electricity. So it's got a lot of velocity. But when that, dam, when that, when that turbine's running, you don't see the uh, level of the lake decreasing that much, okay? And that's because the, the area of the lake is huge, okay? You get a huge area, velocity goes down. It's the same thing here. So you, whenever you've got a, a reservoir, okay, like this system up here, okay, you can assume that the velocity at this point, which we call 1, and this point we call 2, we can assume that those velocities are negligible compared to the velocity in the pipe, which is what's important. So we can drop those two terms out as well. Okay, they're both zero. Okay. Now we've got our Z terms. Now there is a height difference here. Okay, we've got a height up here of 13 plus 3, which is 16 plus 23, so that's 36 metres. Okay. No, it's not. Yes, it's 30, 39 metres even. Okay. And here we've got... Um, 13 metres. And so there is going to be a difference. If we assume that this Z here, Z equals zero here, then we can work out this Z, okay? And so that comes out to be, uh, if this is Z2, it's zero, so that term drops out, okay? Then Z1, Z1 equals, well, that's going to be 13 plus 3 plus 23 minus 13, so that's going to be 26 metres, Okay? So Z1 is 26 metres, OK? And so here's our Bernoulli's equation as it applies in this case. P, P equals 
delta P L. Okay. So, delta P L. We know delta P L equals, okay, it's going to be the sum of all the K values plus F L upon D times by one half rho C squared. Okay. Now, the sum of all the K values, okay, well, that's easy. That's 1 plus 0.9 plus 0.7, okay? We've got a 0.7 here, 0.9, okay? And we've got a 1 here, okay, K value. We're assuming that the pump doesn't introduce a pressure drop, okay? So you add those values up together, okay? And you get, um, that's our sum of the K values, okay? Now we've got a we've got a diameter, okay, and we've got a uh, um, epsilon. So we know that epsilon upon d is 0 0.000045 divided by 0 0.2. That comes out to be 0 0.000225, okay, or 2.251234 times 10 to the minus 4. Sorry. Yep. <coughs> okay, and we know our Reynolds number. We know that we know this form, okay, rho C D upon mu, okay, but we haven't been given mu, we've been given nu, okay, so we know that C D upon nu, okay. And so ah. And we know that C, V dot equals AC, so C equals uh, 4 V dot over pi D squared. Okay, so we can stick that in here. We've got 4 V dot D over uh, pi D squared nu. Everybody know where I get that from? We've got V dot equals A times C. A is pi D squared upon 4. And so we have C equals 4 V dot over pi D squared. That's a 4, not an H. Okay. So you stick that into this equation. Okay. You plug in the numbers. So you've got 4, 0 0.565 divided by pi, 0 0.2, and then 0 0.113 times 10 to the minus 5. We get 3.18 times 10 to the 6. Okay, so we've got our Reynolds number and our relative roughness. Who wants to look up the friction factor? Page 23 in your notes. Which way? That way. Anybody tell me the friction factor? We've got a Reynolds number of three, about 3.2 times 10 to the 6. We've got a relative roughness of 2.25 times 10 to the minus 4. Anybody? <coughs> Anybody? One. I worked it out to be zero point zero one four two, okay? <laughs> So close, yeah, very close. Okay, so we've got a friction factor. I'm going to move it up. Okay. Because, oh, yeah, I should cover that. Um, the flow rate is in litres per second, okay? Litres per second. There are 1,000 litres in a metre cubed, okay? We should know that. 
I'll just write that up here. Sorry, I'll, I'll be back. If you've got 565 five litres per second, we know that in 1,000 in 1, litres, okay, that's one metre cubed, okay? The litres cancel, and so you have 0 0.565 metres cubed per second, okay? Right. Okay, so we've got a friction factor. We can now rearrange our Bernoulli's equation, which is this one here, okay? To solve for delta PP, delta PP equals delta PL minus rho GZ1. So that's going to be the sum of all the K terms, 2.6 plus FL upon D, so that's 0 0.0142 times by the length. Well, we know the length, we've got 23 metres plus three. Now we've got 26 metres for this bit, okay? And we've got 65 down here. 23 plus 65, sorry, 26 plus uh, 65 comes out to be 91 metres, so that's 91, divided by the diameter, that's 0 0.2, and that's all multiplied by the dynamic pressure, one half rho, which is, uh, is water, I'm believing. I make the assumption it's water. I didn't write that down. Times by... Uh, 4 b dot over pi d squared or squared, okay? <coughs> That's minus rho 1000 times 9.81 times by z squared. So that is z1, which you said is 26 meters. Okay, so let's work this out properly. Sorry about the rather messiness of it. So you've got one half times by a thousand times by I work this out this term out four zero point five six five over pi zero point two squared equals seventeen point nine eight. So the velocity is 17.98 metres per second, 17.98 squared, times by 2.6 plus 0.142 times by 91 divided by 0 0.2. Okay. Minus 1,000, 9.81 times by 26. You do the sums. And that comes out to be 1.21 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. <coughs> and we know that power equals delta PP times by V dot, okay? So we know we've got the delta PP here, 1.21 times 10 to the 6, times by 0 0.565. And that comes out to be 6, 8, 3, 7, times 10 to the 5 watts, which is, sorry, 10 to the 3 watts. Uh, no, 10 to the 5, that's right, which is 683 seven kilowatts. Okay, so it's quite a long problem, okay? So I'll go through it again. Just quickly, not I won't do the calculations, but I'll just go through it. Okay, we have a pipe system. Okay, between two reservoirs, A and B. Okay, what we do is we have to write down Bernoulli's equation from the start to the finish. This is point one. Okay, and this is point two down here. Bernoulli's equation. We know that the P1 and P2 are atmospheric. They go. 
C1 and C2 are negligible compared to the flow in the pipe. They disappear, okay? We've got rho GZ1 when rho GZ2 is zero. We've got delta PP, which is the pressure rise due to the pump, and delta PL, which is the loss due to the pipe network, okay? So we know P1 and P2 is atmospheric. This is 26, okay? So this is our form of Bernoulli's equation as it applies to this problem, okay? As it applies to this problem, you may hear that phrase again. As it applies to this problem, okay? And we know delta PL, that's the sum of the K values, plus FL upon D, all multiplied by the dynamic pressure, okay? We know the sum of the K values, that comes out to be 2.6, okay? And to determine F, we need to work out the Reynolds number, okay? And the relative roughness. You can work those out. Relative roughness comes out to be 2.26 times 10 to the minus 4, Reynolds number was 3.2 times 10 to the 6, okay? To work out the Reynolds number, I need to work out what C was, and I use this continuity. Again, there's something that's very important for you to remember, okay? Don't forget that. And F comes out to be 0 0.0142. You plug the numbers into the equation, you get this one, okay? Which gives you the, the pressure drop, or the pressure rise that the pump can provide. The power required is the pressure rise multiplied by the flow rate, and you end up getting this. Okay? <coughs> okay, so, can I? Yes. PP, if, um, if you're here at the start of the lecture, I'll go back to it. It's the pressure rise due to the pump, okay? So if I, uh, oops, what's that all about? If I go to the beginning of the lecture, We have the pressure drop here, delta PP, which is due to the pressure rise in the pump, okay? Delta PL is the pressure loss. So, 